Hello and welcome back to another Strat Gaming video guide. In this episode of the Ultimate Guide to Bannerlord, we are going to do an in-depth look at charm and leadership, from how they work to how we gain XP, and finally how we can level both efficiently. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you my favorite Game of Thrones-like strategy for taking over a faction and ruling with an iron fist. I'm your host Strat, and I make Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord guides for YouTube, so if you like that sort of content, I highly recommend subscribing so you don't miss any future guides. I've broken this video up into several chapters, so if you're following along, you'll be able to easily navigate through relevant segments. Check down in the description below for the timestamps. With all that being said, I hope you enjoy this guide and let's get started. One often overlooked aspect of Bannerlord is relations with other nobles and notables. For notables, it can mean the difference between being able to recruit 40 plus high tier troops in a town or recruiting none. For nobles, a higher relationship can net you a great marriage partner or even help recruit more clans to your own kingdom. The charm skill helps maximize the effect of each relationship gain action taken. Charm is very simple. You get a bonus multiplier to the relationship gain starting out at half a percent at level 1 and all the way up to 150% at level 300. So at level 1, you might gain 5 relationship with a noble, but at level 300, that same action would net you between 12 and 13. Anytime you see the relationship gain pop up at the top of your screen, you will have gained charm XP. Let's take a look at all the ways we level our charm skill. Clearing bandit hideouts gives 40 XP. Clearing gangs from a town gives 40 XP at the first stage and 880 XP at the second stage. Releasing nobles after battle gives 80 XP for a regular noble, 1600 XP for a clan leader, and 2400 for the faction leader. Bartering with nobles doesn't give any XP if it's an even trade, but if you donate money to them you can earn anywhere from 60 XP all the way up to 1200 XP depending on how much money you give. The level 25 charm perk Icebreaker gives 40 XP when the event triggers. Saving a caravan or villagers from bandits gives mixed results anywhere from 0 XP up to 2400. Crafting orders at the smithy gave 40 XP. Improving relationships with clans on the kingdom tab gave 400 XP for 50 influence. Voting on policies that are brought up by other nobles grant anywhere from 800 to 5600 XP. Voting for fiefs grant anywhere from 2000 to 7600 XP. And a couple final points before we look at the quests. If you complete an action that would normally give XP but you didn't gain any relationship for it for whatever reason, you will not get XP. Proposing policies does not give XP unless somebody is voting with you, giving you a relationship gain. Any action resulting in relationship gain with a ruling clan will give you 25 to 50% more XP than if it was a normal lord. There are over 30 quests in the game, all of which give XP. In order to make the data more digestible, let's break them up into groups. First, quest from gang leaders. XP for each of these quests is quite bad, so if you're trying to level charm, just stay away. Gang leader needs weapons is decent for early game money, and fencing stolen goods is good for relationship gain. Next, quest for notables. Once again, these quests are all bad when it comes to XP gain for charm. There are a few decent ones for early money, like train the troops or manual labors. For relationship gain, there are four that provide over 20. Upon completing the find the daughter quest, I was able to gain the merciful trait, so I'm not sure if it was specifically for that quest or accumulation of all the other ones and that one was just the tipping point. Finally, the quests from nobles. Several of these require that you be at least a mercenary of their faction to even begin. As far as XP goes, most are decent. Avoid ladies night out and revolt. If you're lucky enough to get tutor, raiding enemy territory, or capture enemy noble, take them. 6k is a huge amount of XP. Raiding also provides a huge reward at 15,000 dinars plus 3,000 for each raid on top of the three that they are asking for. Capturing a noble and tutoring also provides an incredible 38 relationship gain. Now when it comes to efficiently leveling charm, there are two categories. Before you become a vassal or start your own kingdom and after. When you are on your own or a mercenary, your best chance of leveling are noble quests or releasing clan leaders and factions leaders after battle. However, it might be best to ignore that and just get to vassalage as fast as possible. Once there, be sure to vote every chance you get, even if it's the lowest tier for 15 influence. Voting for a fief for your clan leader with 150 influence will net you over 10,000 charm XP. If you have a 12.5 XP multiplier, you will have earned over 130,000 charm XP with literally no effort. 130,000 XP is enough to go from level 1 to level 82, or from 100 to 100. 18. With the number of times I've seen faction leaders hog all of the fiefs, you'll be at 330 in no time. 
If there is one quality that every major historical military commander has in common, it's got to be great leadership. The same can be said for Bannerlord. Each level of leadership provides an increase to our army's morale as well as garrison size. We start with a base morale of 50 and increase by 0.1 each level. At level 300, our base morale goes up to 80. Unless you have all tier 6 units in your late game army, then morale is incredibly important to ensure your army doesn't rout before the fight is over. While leadership may be incredibly important, it's also incredibly simple because there are only three ways to gain XP for it. You gain leadership XP for each prisoner you recruit starting at 2 XP for a tier 1 all the way up to a tier 6 giving 12 XP. We gain XP for each troop under our command when our morale is at 75 or above. XP values are listed on a per day gain, 1 XP for 10, 8 XP for 100 troops, and add another 8 XP for each 100 on top of that. The troop tier is irrelevant as I tested tier 1 through tier 6 and all the results were the same. The final way to gain XP is through leading an army. Looking at the results of nearly 100 tests, we can see very clearly how XP gain works leading an army. In order to qualify, there must be at least two armies. An army can qualify if it has at least one person in it. A companion leading an army can lead itself and that will count. Leadership XP is gained per troop and is tier dependent. Looking at the chart, we see tier 1 at 0.46 XP per person per day, all the way up to a tier 6, giving a 1.79 XP per person per day. Where the troops are make no difference. They could be all in your personal army, or in a companion's, or other nobles. An example of this, I ran an army by myself with just me, called in all available nobles from other clans, and was gaining thousands of XP per day. Another example, I ran an army with all my troops in my personal army and a solo companion, then shifted all my troops to the companions and ran solo for myself. The XP matched perfectly. A couple miscellaneous points. XP gain is calculated on a per hour basis, not the usual once per per day tick. Boosting army cohesion does not grant leadership XP. The numbers are very clear here. There is one way to level leadership and that is to lead an army. Let's look at two different scenarios so we can efficiently level early and late game. Get to vassalage as fast as you can so you can create an army. Give one of your companions half of their troop limit. If they can take 100 troops just give them 50 and then call them into your army. Once they are in, take all the troops back by clicking on their portrait in the bottom right and inspect troops. You will now gain XP for your troops that you would normally have in your army and you aren't slowed down any because your companion is solo and on horseback. It will cost you zero influence to create and zero influence to boost cohesion when it gets low. If you can afford more troops, let your companion recruit at each town or village you stop at and recruit prisoners. You can give them prisoners manually to recruit them without taking the morale hit as well. If funds are tight, limit their recruiting on the clan tab. Now, once you're established, have plenty of funds to support large armies and have plenty of influence, you will be ready for the next step, which is max leadership in no time. Your goal is to have as many troops in your army at all times as possible, with an emphasis on higher tier troops. Tier 3 troops are worth more than twice what a tier 1 is worth, a tier 6 almost 5 times what a tier 1 is worth. Load your personal companions party with as many high value troops as possible. Create an army and call them in as well as other nobles from your faction. Keep them in the army as long as you can. There isn't much else to it than that. We are nearing the end of the video and as promised, I'll show you my favorite strategy for ruling any kingdom with an iron fist. There are two parts to this, becoming the leader of the faction and controlling every aspect of the faction such as policies, fief, ownership, etc. To become the leader of the faction is actually really easy to do. All you need is some sort of ranged weapon and be at least a vassal of the kingdom. Find the leader, follow them around until they engage in any fight. Join them to quote unquote help out. Save the game before you go in because we have a 10% chance of success with each try. Win the battle and don't exit. Go on a search mission to find the leader. Now pretend they have an apple on their head and begin your target practice. Once they are accidentally murdered, you will be voted in as the successor. I've done this countless times and have become the leader 100% of the time even without me voting, so don't worry about influence. Controlling each aspect of the kingdom is a little bit trickier. You will need to save lots of influence, keep an eye on how much influence other clans have, and periodically drain their influence influence by calling votes that they will participate in. If you have a couple thousand and the other members are in the hundreds, you will be in great shape. Start calling votes for things that others will vote on. If it costs you 200 influence to force another clan to use up 50 influence, then make sure you have at least five times the influence that they have. This will ensure you can drain their influence and then win whatever vote you want when they run out. I've done this before where I joined a kingdom to sabotage them, saved up tons of influence, took several towns, voted most of the nobles to be expelled from the kingdom, and 
enacted all the bad policies, and then left the kingdom with my fiefs and joined the actual kingdom that I wanted to join in the first place. It may not be the most efficient way to play, but it is hilarious and good fun. A couple points to help us with this. Be sure to enact policies that remove influence from everyone. As a human player, you will have a much easier time gaining influence than the AI. It's much easier to remove one influence from you and everyone else at a one-to-one -one ratio through bad policies than it is to call bogus votes to burn their influence, which will end up costing you around five times that amount. Towns with forums are amazing. Get as many towns as you can, and at level three, they will give off one and a half influence per day. The level 125 charm perk champion gives 10 influence for winning a tournament. While time consuming, it can be a great way to stack influence without needing late game setups like towns or the final charm perk. The level 275 charm perk, Immortal Charm, gives bonus influence each day. At level 300, you'll be gaining 10 influence per day, which adds up very quickly. I want to thank you all for watching another Strat Gaming video guide. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe. The likes really help out the video with the YouTube algorithm, and a small channel like this one needs all the help it can get. Let me know in the comment section below what kind of guide you would like to see in the future. Up next, we will be doing a complete guide to trading, so stay tuned. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.